Shatterline launched to almost 22,000 players, which for a brand new IP with almost no marketing is extremely impressive, especially considering it was a PC only release. I haven't checked in on the game or even heard anything about it since the last video I made and I was thinking the other day, what happened to Shatterline? At the time of recording this video, the game only has a few hundred people playing at any given time. That's quite a fall from grace over the last two years, which is sad because fundamentally, this is a good game. In a lot of ways, it's kind of similar to what we're seeing X Defiant bring to the table, a classic arcade style arena shooter with character abilities, good gunplay, and interesting map designs. If you're on PC and you're looking for something to fill the void while we wait for X Defiant to actually launch, this game is a good stand-in for the time being. While Shatterline launched to a lot of hype, it's really struggled in recent months to garner enough attention to bring new players into the game or really have returning players in general. This may be in part to the lack of a marketing budget and very little content being made on the game from creators. Not really sure what's going on there, but very few people seem to be aware of this game. Hey, I'm doing my part. In fact, I have multiple videos on the channel where I try and showcase lesser known games that I think are at least good enough to try out for a weekend or two. If that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing because I don't just upload your average Call of Duty news videos. Now I think we can all agree when it comes to hype for any game, movie, or TV show, a big part of what builds interest is how much people are talking about it online, whether that be clips for TikTok, YouTube shorts, people streaming the game, or people just talking about it on Twitter or X as it's called. In my opinion, the game has really been polished up well over the last two years. We've seen things added like new weapons, new maps, and new game modes, as well as the overall balance of the game just being in a good place right now. They've also added a 3v3 round based mode similar to something like a gunfight from Call of Duty. This is a game that absolutely deserves a chance, and there are really only two main issues holding it back, but we'll talk about those later. Let's jump into update R85, also known as Season Golf, that just launched a few days ago and see how the game is. And before anyone comments below, what about the extraction part of the game? This video is more so focused on the multiplayer side of the game. If you're interested in an extraction shooter part of the game, which in all fairness is pretty solid, check out my other video linked in the description below. So what's new in Shatterline since the last time I checked in? The main addition to the game when it comes to content in update R85 is the addition of a new game mode called Plant the Bomb, which unfortunately at the time of this recording seems to only be available in the ranked mode, and when I went to record gameplay of it, I couldn't find a lobby. This is essentially a twist on CSGO, implemented in a really unique way within Shatterline. You get a certain amount of currency for actions in the game, as the rounds progress, you will get access to better weapons, equipment, as well as unlocking your character's abilities if you choose. Plant the Bomb has an extra layer of complexity when compared to a game like CSGO because of the player's character abilities. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I like learning how each ability works, when to best use them, and also how to counter them. This game mode is a great addition to the game, but one of my main criticisms of Shatterline in general is that we've been playing on the same 10 maps for about a year now. They've made lots of balance changes in this update, but when it comes down to new content on offer, they usually only have one major content addition per season. To be fair, most players are probably used to the amount of content we get from something like Call of Duty, which has a massive number of developers and a larger budget. If you didn't know, Shatterline is developed by Frag Labs, a much smaller studio with somewhere around 200 employees total, but I couldn't verify the actual number of employees that were actually hands-on developers. Not to mention, they were originally based in Kiev, Ukraine, and I'm sure they've had some <coughs> interruptions in development. So what does Shatterline do well, and who would enjoy this type of game? I'll go out on a limb here and say Shatterline is very reminiscent of a Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4 type of a game. It's an FPS set in the future where players can choose from a variety of characters with different abilities. The time to kill is a bit on the longer side, and that's something I really appreciate because it widens the skill gap and encourages movement around the map instead of just camping in a corner trying to be the first person to shoot. Yes, Infinity Ward, you suck and you've never made a single good game. Anyway, the map designs overall are really solid and strike a good balance between that classic three lane style map and maps that are just overall big and complex. You get good variety of map sizes and styles, although they do tend to lean a bit on the smaller side, so you're never too far away from the action. The weapons also have the right amount of predictive recoil, so you actually get rewarded for learning the recoil patterns, and there's no ridiculous visual recoil that makes it impossible to see what you're aiming at, which us mouse and keyboard players greatly appreciate. While I think Shadowline is a solid game, there are definitely a few things holding the game back, as well as some opportunities to improve the game. 
If you're enjoying the video so far, do me a favor, drop a like on the video and consider subscribing for more first person shooter content. The number one most important feature that in my opinion, the devs should drop everything else and focus on is bringing console support with crossplay to the game. This game absolutely needs to make it to console for three reasons. Number one, players on console have been waiting so long to get access to this game since I think 2023 when Frag Labs announced that eventually it was coming to console. And number two, it would create a massive boost to the player count, reducing queue times so players could find matches quicker. An increase in players would actually allow them to have proper support for the ranked mode, and it would also give them a massive boost in revenue since this is a free to play game and more people would purchase skins in the shop. I know that not everyone likes or supports the idea of esports, but who knows, if it's done correctly, a proper ranked mode could be something that captures a lot of players. Apex Legends popularity was basically born out of this exact thing. Sure, Apex launched to a larger player base as it was one of the only free to play games back in 2019 and one of the only competitors to Fortnite when it introduced its esports league. Now, you could argue there's the Call of Duty league, but at that time, with Modern Warfare 2019, I don't know how many people really cared about Call of Duty esports, but maybe that's just me. Now, I'm not saying that Shadowline could do the same thing, but it's definitely possible if you give more players access to the game with a good ranked mode. The majority of gamers are on console and probably can't be bothered to care about a game that they can't even play and understandably so. PC players would finally be able to play with their friends who might be on other platforms. I've wanted to play this game with a bunch of people but haven't been able to because I only have one or two friends that are on PC and it's incredibly frustrating because I know that other people would love to try this game out and would definitely consider grinding it. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest factors when it comes to determining the success and staying power of a new game. In today's day and age where Fortnite has basically set the standard of crossplay, it's almost a requirement to get people into your game. The next thing that would dramatically improve Shadowline is giving people access to creating community content. This would help fill out the content drought and would give players access to more maps, even if they were only maps that got approved by the dev team. Having tons of people that are super passionate about your game creating content that they think would fit the game is almost always a massive win for both the studio and the players. Who knows, that maybe they could also find some really talented developers through community created content that they would either want to work with or hire onto the official team. We've seen games like Apex actually get a whole roster of community content created through the unofficial mod R5 Reloaded, with fans recreating things like Shipment and Nuketown from Call of Duty that players can play and experience in Apex Legends. Speaking of Call of Duty, Treyarch did this exact thing back in Black Ops 3 by giving PC players access to mod tools to create unique experiences. This is the sole feature that led to so many amazing zombie maps and YouTube videos of people playing those community created zombie maps. The last suggestion I have is going to be a hot take, but since this game does so many things right at the core of its gameplay, I'd absolutely love to play some version of a Shatterline Battle Royale. Now, I know, I know, not every game needs a BR, I got it, but if I could have my pick of games that should have a BR, this is definitely one of them. I'd really like to see how they balance things like abilities, ground loot, and healing mechanics. In a perfect world, this game as a BR could potentially be some sort of mashup between something like Blackout from Black Ops 4 and Apex Legends. But that's all I got for this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you've played Shatterline and what your thoughts are, or if you're on console and would really like to give it a try. If you want to watch another video on FPS games, click here.